What if you could have enterprise grade security, complete control over your traffic, and a firewall trusted by professionals? Today, we'll be diving into PFSense, a free open source router that can transform your home network or home lab. Let's break down what makes PFSense so powerful, how to install it, and why building your own router is the best first step to building your home lab. PFSense is an open source firewall and router software based on FreeBSD. FreeBSD is a free Unix-based operating system that's used by loads of different companies like Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, and many others. Maybe I'll put them up here. PFSense offers great enterprise level security features for free. Features such as VLAN support, VPNs, intrusion detection system and prevention systems such as Snort, and many more. There are other options for open source routers that you can install. The most common being OpenSense. PFSense just happened to be the first one that I stumbled upon watching a Network Chuck video. And I did my research and saw it had a great community behind it. So I'm going with that. That doesn't mean I'm going to use it forever and, and maybe I'll end up moving to something else in the future. But for now, this is good enough. So why am I ditching my commercial router and installing my own? Well, the first home labbing thing that I actually did was installed Proxmox on my two Think centers and ran a couple Linux VMs and set up a Kubernetes cluster. Grafana and Prometheus was my first deployment on the Kubernetes cluster. And really the only thing I had to monitor at the time was the Kubernetes cluster itself. I really wanted to monitor my network. So I went down that rabbit hole and I quickly found out that the commercial router didn't really have everything built in that I wanted to, specifically SNMP, to monitor traffic. Now there are other protocols I probably could have used to monitor traffic, but I felt like I didn't have the control I was looking for with just the off the shelf router. And then I started digging deeper and, and found all of these other really cool things that you can do with an open source router, like setting up a VPN on the router so that all of your traffic routes to that VPN or having firewall logs. It doesn't seem like a big deal when you don't have them, but once you have them, you never don't not want to have them. <laughs> I also realized that everything else you stand up in your home lab is going to depend on your network. So if your network isn't set up properly or you don't have control over your network to make changes, then you're probably going to hamstring yourself as you start to mature your stack. All right, I think that's enough background. Let's get into actually doing this thing. So what do we need? You're really only gonna need two things to do this. One is a flash drive, a USB stick, whatever you wanna call this thing, and something to install PFSense on. I went a little overkill on selecting my hardware to install PFSense on. For me, the Protectly Vault V1410 has 8 gigs of RAM, 4 NICs, and plenty of storage. And so it was perfect for me. NetGate, the company that maintains PFSense, actually sells a piece of hardware for about 200 bucks that you can install PFSense on and is perfect. There's also more advanced ways to run PFSense. You could, for example, run PFSense as a VM on top of Proxmox. Now, this complicates the networking, but it's totally possible, and there's lots of examples of people doing this. All right, so let's get into how I did this. So what is your home network likely look like now, and what is it gonna look like after we get done installing PFSense? 
So you have the internet. And that's connected to your modem. Your modem is either provided by your internet service provider or you potentially have your own. Either way, we won't be touching that. Your modem is then likely connected to a router and access point combination unit. For example, I was using a Netgear Orbi mesh network before I switched to PFSense. The Orbi system acted both as the router and as the access point for my wireless devices to connect to. So where is PFSense going to go in all this? Whatever you're installing PFSense on is just going to replace your existing router and access point device. So you're going to plug that thing right into your modem. It's not recommended to run your Wi-Fi directly off PFSense. It does support it. However, it's recommended that you have a dedicated access point. What I ended up doing was I just used my Orbi system in access point only mode. This actually made it really easy because all my devices remembered that Wi-Fi network and all of the WPA2 authentication was the same. And so what I ended up doing was just connecting PFSense directly to what is now only my access point. All right, so to actually install PFSense, whatever target device you have, you'll need to create a bootable media on a USB stick. To do this, you'll first download PFSense from the NetGate website. You'll want to select the image type for the platform you'll be installing on. Like I said earlier, there is an ISO for a VM if you're going to be doing the install on Proxmox. You'll select that and press Add to Cart. And again, it looks like you're buying something, but it's actually nothing. So don't be afraid. After going through the free purchase, you'll receive a download link for the NetGate installer. Go ahead and download that. Once your download is complete, you'll want to create the bootable media. If you're using Windows, you can use a tool like Rufus to easily make this bootable media. You'll open Rufus. You'll select the target device you want to install on. You'll go to your downloads and find the NetGate installer and press start. You'll get prompted that everything's going to be deleted. Once you've booted up whatever machine you're running PFSense on, the installation menu will need you to be connected to the internet. I needed to factory reset my modem a couple of times before it recognized the Protect Leave Vault and assigned it the public IP address. I'm not going to provide specific instructions on how to do this, as everyone likely has a different modem, but just a word of caution that your modem probably expects to be connected to your old router. And so when you connect it to whatever device you'll be installing PFSense on, it'll be expecting a specific MAC address that'll likely need to be cleared before it assigns your new device 
the public IP address from your ISP. The rest of the installation is pretty straightforward once you have your device connected to the internet. Going through the installation prompts, you can select all the default values as once we have PFSense installed, we can access it via our web browser and change all of these. The only things you want to make sure you set up correctly are which ports you have associated with your WAN and your LAN, and those are connected appropriately. Once your installation is complete and PFSense is running on your new device, you should be able to access PFSense from your web browser by going to 192.168.1.1 unless you change this during the install. You'll log in with the default admin credentials, which is admin and PFSense. You can always find this online. Once logged in, you'll go through the PFSense wizard setup to get your new router configured correctly. First, if you want to be cool, you'll pick a sweet domain name. For me, I picked vermilion.local. If you know, you know. Word of caution is to make sure you set up your DNS server correctly. I actually forgot to set this up on my initial configuration and for about a week I was having some odd things occurring in my network. For example, my Tesla wouldn't connect to the internet along with some of my gaming consoles. I quickly figured out that DNS resolution was the issue here and went back into PFSense and configured the DNS server to 8.8.8.8 .8 which is the default Google DNS server. Next, I'd recommend changing the default LAN IP address of your network. It defaults to 192.168.1.1, which is the common address for most routers. Changing this just gives you an extra layer of security. Third, I'd recommend setting a strong and unique admin password for your router. If you're not using a password manager, I highly recommend starting to use one. Personally, I like Bitwarden as it has plugins for Chrome and apps for iPhones and other Apple devices, so it works well for me. So that's it. You've got your own router now running your home network. We didn't dive into the more advanced details or features of PFSense. We really just got the general configuration and setup and got internet back into our house. I'd love to dive in deeper into some of the more advanced settings of PFSense. Let me know in the comments if there's anything specific I should look into or make a video on. I will be setting up SNMP in the future that way, I can aggregate network logs with Prometheus and display them in Grafana. I do want to take time to just say thank you to all the kind comments and support. This is only my second video, and I'm already almost at 100 followers, which is crazy. The numbers don't mean a ton to me, but they do push me to be consistent, to keep making content to show that even if you're a working dad or not a dad and just busy with life, that you can still build a small scale home lab and really cool stuff and you don't have to have a whole server rack. So I plan to continue to make this content consistently, posting weekly videos 
and teaching and learning along the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.